this guy were private property, if it were owned by, let's say, Waste Management Inc., we couldn't just dump wastes into it for free. So I began to think about this problem from the standpoint of, well, you know, if, if we're going to deal with global warming, it might make sense to think about who owns the sky. Roughly, we need to cut carbon in half, carbon emissions in half over the next 30 years or so. That would be the time frame over which the American economy would be expected to double in size. And then we need to cut carbon in half yet again. So anybody who thinks about that realizes that fossil fuels are the central nervous system of industrial civilization, and we have to switch it out. Who could possibly own the sky? You, I don't think you would want Waste Management Inc. to own the sky and charge all of us money for uh, polluting. Arguably, the government could step in and act as owners, and we would pay something to the government for dumping stuff in the sky. But the other possibility is that uh, we could all own it collectively, together, in some kind of a trust. If we're going to fix the market failure that is the root cause of climate change, which is the fact that there is no price, there is no nothing we pay to pollute. So pollution's free, let's just go out and do it. If pollution weren't free, then clean forms of energy uh, would be more competitive with the dirty forms. That's what we want. We want to tilt the market in that direction. But there's a downside to that which is that we're all going to pay more than we're now paying for the things that we do every day, and that's going to diminish our living standard, unless we figure out a way to pay ourselves as owners. Peter Barnes and uh, the whole idea of cap and dividend is just a take on the cap and trade idea that simplifies it. It seems to me pretty obvious that uh, it would be a good thing for a politician to uh, support a program which uh, provided monthly income to every one of his or her constituents. People would get that money every month, which is what people need to pay fire bills, pay their mortgages, buy food. As prices go up, so do your dividends. So everybody is protected. This idea is starting to get traction. It's actually getting a lot of traction now, in part because of the economic downturn. How does it work in terms of the social fabric? Say that I'm a high-flying guy and I have two homes and a boat and I travel to Belize and I got, a, I got all things working for me in life. Well, my carbon prices maybe go up a couple thousand bucks. Okay, not so bad. But I still get this rebate check because I own my share of the atmosphere, the atmospheric commons that I'm renting to the polluters. They're, they're paying me rent, scarcity rent, because that's, that's my piece of, the, of it. So I, I, I'm now okay with this, even though I didn't you know, make out, I understand that it's fair, I understand that it's universal, and there, at least somebody's doing something about this global warming problem. Now say I'm in the other part of society, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy with three kids and a, my wife works for minimum wage and I work for 12 bucks an hour. My, my situation isn't that great in America. I'm busting my butt trying to make this all add up. My carbon costs go up, too, because I have to buy gasoline, I have to buy electricity, and I have to buy natural gas to heat my home. But my carbon costs only go up maybe $600, because I don't get that Belize thing going on, and I don't have uh, the, the, the boat and the two houses. So my carbon costs go and go up $600 instead of 2000 But I get a rebate check back for me and my spouse and each of my two kids. So I get $1,200 back. You see what I'm saying? So... It's fair. That's the key idea about this policy is it's fair. Everybody gets the price signal. Use less fossil fuels. But we don't make middle America sweat while we try to squeeze the carbon out of the economy. We're not trying to squeeze Americans. We're trying to squeeze the carbon out of the economy while keeping people's purchasing power up. Cap carbon as it enters the economy, because carbon comes in in the form of a fossil fuel, 
coal, oil, natural gas. And it comes into the economy only in a relatively small number of places. You know, it comes out of a tanker, out of a coal mine, an oil well. There's a limited number of permits that are available issued by the federal government. And we auction those permits on auction day annually. And the 2,000 or fewer companies in America that bring fossil fuels into the American economy, the oil companies, the gas companies, the coal companies, the first sale of the carbon into the American economy has to have a permit with the sale. So uh, the bill of sale has to come with permits so that you can burn the carbon. And that number of permits is ratcheted down on that predictable timeline that science requires. The idea of capping suppliers rather than emitters makes a lot of sense for carbon. You actually catch all the carbon in the economy because if it doesn't come in, it can't go out. So you really nip it in the bud, so to speak. And what's beautiful about this idea is that the fossil fuel industry feels the full weight of the price signal. And so does the consumer. This is a key fact. The consumer thinks, wow, I gotta use less gasoline. I gotta buy one of these hybrid cars. You know, maybe, honey, we should insulate this house a little better. So the consumer sees the full weight of the price signal too, but he's held harmless or made whole. So I, I'm, I'm for a very, very simple policy that gets carbon prices going up, holds middle America harmless so that this, pop, this policy is both popular and this policy is fair and that over time we'll get the carbon reductions that we need that the science requires. So that, that's why I think the, uh, the cap and dividend idea is an elegant, simple, transparent uh, version of the cap and trade policy that's going to be debated in Congress. During the presidential campaign, uh, Obama was quite clear that he supports a carbon cap with 100% auctioning of the permits, no giving free permits to polluters, and then returning a huge chunk of that money to the people to offset higher energy prices. Now, he hasn't officially endorsed cap and dividend, but this is something that is right up Obama's alley. By sticking with his campaign promise to return most of the carbon revenue to the people, uh, Obama will be uh, essentially doing cap and dividend, which is the right way to deal with climate change. That took a lot longer than a minute. What are we going to do? Deal with it. Deal with it.